Hey friends, Ryan Lestrange here with the Weekly Word. And my word for you is the war for your mind, a deliverance strategy. I want to talk about this because I think it's something that people are really overlooking. That an, an, an assignment of demonic attack, of demonic assault, of reformation is your mind, the war for your thought life. I heard one preacher say it this way. Your life is moving in the direction of your dominant or prevailing thought. First Peter 1 says this in verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, gird up, protect, secure the loins the reproductive area of your mind. So one of the things that I think we we teach and advocate that becomes a little bit erroneous is we focus in deliverance so much on casting out. This is the beginning stage of deliverance. It is one of the primary ministries of Jesus in the Bible. We see him going around casting demons out everywhere he goes. It was the thing the Pharisees didn't understand, the Sadducees didn't understand, the scribes didn't understand. Jesus cast out the devil. It is something the church has been called to do according to the gospel uh, of Mark in the Great Commission. We are to cast out demons. But there is another layer that we leave out. And what happens is many of us are stuck at altar after altar after altar, getting stuff cast out, cast out, cast out. But we never seem to occupy the space and place of the promise of God for our life. And I would submit to you, it's because we don't discern and, and navigate the war for our mind, that there is a battle for influence in your mind. It is no mistake Peter uses language, gird up the loins of your mind, the reproductive areas of your life. Your mind is the seat of your will. It is where decisions are made. I'm going to go left. I'm going to go right. So Satan understands if he can influence your thought life, your imaginations, your creativity, he can dictate the direction of your life. And what that becomes is an open doorway that now demonic entities can trespass in and out in traffic because they're moving through the portal of your thoughts thoughts. So there is a war for your mind. Now, in first Peter, he says, wherefore gird up. It's interesting to me because he doesn't say God's going to do it for you. It's much like Paul's writings in Romans 12, renew your mind. He doesn't say God's going to do it for you. There is no supernatural impartation by, you know, as stated in scripture of a renewed mind. It is rather a process of detangling and detaching from thought patterns that you've learned because life is one of the greatest teachers. Many of us have observed our environment and acclimated to it. And so if we grew up in dysfunction, we are now saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, but we're doing it with a great level of dysfunction. And because we've had an experience at an altar where someone said, come out and our body reacted, we think we're delivered when in fact our mind is filled with a library of dysfunctional belief systems. This is why the teacher is so critical because it is the ministry of teaching that brings reformation. Uh, people say, what is your opinion about marriage? What is your opinion? It doesn't matter what my opinion is because by being a Christian, I have ultimately accepted the adaptation of my will to his will, my opinion to his opinion. So my job is to dig in this word and find out what Jesus believes on a matter. And then I amend my beliefs to Jesus' beliefs. And that is a process. So one of the greatest deliverances that happens in your life is when you begin to think differently. Because when you think differently, you're going to decide differently. And when you decide differently, you're going to live differently and you are going to host the presence of God in a new way. But today, Satan is battling for your mind. There's a war against your mind aligning with the mind of God. Because once your mind aligns with the mind of God, every cultural limitation, every humanistic limitation, Every educational limitation, every economic limitation is eliminated from your life because you have access to the brilliance and the genius of God. But that only happens when you step out of the way you've been trained to think 
and you begin to explore the depths of the creativity, ingenuity, and brilliance of God Almighty. And I believe today, many of you, the greatest area of warfare in your life is not your body, is not your money. Those things may be under siege. It's your mind. Because when you believe different, you're going to live different. So I want to pray for you, and I want to challenge you to make the security and deliverance of your mind a priority. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in the authority of Jesus' name for your people. I thank you for a sound mind. I thank you for a commitment to gird up the loins, the reproductive areas of our minds. I thank you for uh, a willingness, God, to partner with Jesus through his word because you said in the beginning was the word, the word is with God, the word was God. I thank you for that partnership with the word to begin to restore godly thinking, godly character, godly ideas. And I bless our minds that we may think Think like you, Lord, on earth, in us, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.